Okay, this is Matt Wright, and I'm here to do a simple example of how we can apply the solution to Laplace's equation to a physical situation. Imagine that I had a hollow sphere, right? And on the edge of the sphere, it is powered up to have a voltage V on that surface. The big question is, what would the voltage be everywhere else? Well, I can use my boundary conditions to figure that out. All right, so what are my boundary conditions? Well, if I know that this hollow sphere has a radius of R, I am gonna have my, like three to four boundary conditions depending on how you wanna define it. All right, so boundary condition number one. As R goes to zero, right, the potential remains finite. Right? It's not going to blow up, right? Potential, electric potential, potential energy should remain kind of not infinite, right? All right, so when R goes to R, and this is in the inside, right, in the inside of the sphere, so when R goes to R, here I know that the potential is going to go to the voltage on the surface. Cool. All right, outside. So when R goes to R outside, just like it did on the inside, I know that the potential is continuous across the boundary. So what I would suspect is that as I go across this boundary from here to, when I go right up close to the boundary, that that potential is going to remain the same. So V is gonna equal V. Whereas the other place I'm interested in is when R goes to infinity. Well, if I go to infinity, then I know my, my voltage is gonna go to zero, right? If I go infinitely far away from this hollow sphere, infinitely far away, I would imagine that there would be no voltage. So what I wanna do is take these boundary conditions and apply it to my solution. And that'll tell me what the potential is everywhere. All right, so we're going to have two equations, one for inside and one for outside, right? Because they have two boundary conditions inside and two boundary conditions outside. So let's start with the inside first. Okay, so I know that at r equal to zero, theta, that this must remain finite. So if I look at my solution, What's going to happen to this term at r equal to zero? Well, at r equal to zero, you're going to have something like zero to the L, right? So it is going to remain finite. That's cool. What happens when I apply one over zero L plus one? Well, now I got a problem because whenever I have one over zero or I approach it, that's going to blow up, right? And become infinite it will not be finite, not finite. So that tells me that inside, that B inside at every value of L has to be zero or else you're not gonna match that finite boundary condition when R goes to zero. So that tells me that my inside equation is actually quite a bit easier. It's going to be L equals zero to infinity, AL, R, L, PL, cosine theta. Okay. Now, let's think about what to do next. Well, now I want to go to my next boundary for R approaches big R. Okay, there I know that the voltage is equal to V. So this will be the sum of L equals zero to infinity, AL, big R to the L, PL, cosine beta, right? Plugging in for big R. Okay, so I have a constant on this side of the equation and I have 
a series on this side of the equation. And at first your thought is, well crap, I can't solve for that. That's gonna be way too complicated for me. Right? Wow, that's a lot. Well, then I remember something interesting. The Legendre polynomials form a complete set. And that each Legendre polynomial is orthogonal. So I can apply the Legendre trick, right? That's just like the Fourier trick, only it's the Legendre trick, right? I multiply both sides by PM. And I integrate from minus 1 to 1, dx, right, or d cosine theta, right, and then I do that over here, and the only way I get a non-zero number is if the L and the M are equal. But there's another way of doing this, and you can just think about taking this term and expanding it out into Legendre polynomials, right? And so since it's a constant, it's an easy one. So it's going to be v times p0 of x. What's p0 of x? It's 1. So, right, p1 of x is 1, p0 of x is 1, p1 is, of x is x, so p0 of the cosine of theta is equal to 1, p1 of the cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So here, this is in terms of cosine of theta. So I can take this v and just simply multiply it by 1. Now, if there were higher orders of cosine of theta, I would have to match them up to Legendre polynomials. So you had a series of Legendre polynomials on this side, and you had a series of Legendre polynomials on this side. And th then you just match terms, right? So like, there's no P1 on this side of the equation. So that means that this term has to be zero. So zero, zero, and so on. So I'm left by just looking at this equation. R to the zero is one, so A to the zero is V. Right? And all the other terms are zero. So I only have one term in the expansion. So V inside, is equal to just the one term, right? So I don't have to write a sum. It's going to be a0, r to the 0, p0, cosine theta, right? And no other terms, because all these terms are 0. And while I know what a0 is, it's v. r, little r to the 0 is 1. And the cosine, the first Legendre, the zeros Legendre polynomial is just one, so my answer is that V inside is equal to the voltage. Now, that should make sense from all the work that we were doing when we were numerically solving the Legendre polynomial, which said that the voltage is just equal to the average of the crap around it. So if you're inside of this thing, and the entire walls are equal to V, if I take the average of the stuff in, outside, it's going to be V. So it's going to be V everywhere. So inside, the voltage is V. Let's look at the outside. Outside, we take our solution, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go. Sorry, John. Yeah. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the solution at r equal to infinity. What happens when I approach infinitely far away? Well, if I look at this one, infinity to the l, we got a problem there, right? Our solution's not going to be finite. It's going to be infinite. That's not good. 
So the only way that this can be true is if AL goes to zero. Now, if I look here, well, crap, now I might have an issue. Let's take a look. 1 over infinity to the L plus 1, well, that's going to go to zero. I'm in business. So my potential outside is going to be the sum L equals 0 to infinity, BL, 1 over R to the L plus 1, PL, cosine theta. Cool. Well, now I'm going to apply back to my boundary condition right at the surface. There I know that my little r becomes big R, right? So I know this side of the equation is V times P0, the zeroth Legendre polynomial. And here, right, term by term, Right? Just writing it out and having plugged in big R for little r, right, at the surface. Well, I'm now I just go ahead and match all of my p0s. Right? And if you look, there's no p1 or no p2 here. Remember, because the Legendre polynomial is orthogonal and complete, I can do this trick. All the terms up there are going to go to 0, and the only term that doesn't go to 0 is this. And so you're going to have v is equal to v0 over r, or v0 is equal to v times r. So if I look at the solution outside, it's going to be v as a function, right? Again, we're only going to have the first term. All the others are going to be 0. So you're going to get v times r divided by little r, right, times p1 cosine theta, or p0 cosine theta, well, here that p0 is just 1, because it's the first, it's the 0 Legendre polynomial, and you just get vr 1 over little r. And that tells me what my potential will be. So what does it look like if I plot it? So inside the potential, so this is outside, Inside the potential, I know it's just V. So it's going to look flat. And then outside, it's going to fall off like 1 over R squared. So I can figure out what it's going to be here at 2R. If I put in 2R here, you get 1 half 